name of Jesus. Come, let us give you praise. Come, let us glorify the Lord Most High. We love to praise your name. We love to, we love to, we love to praise your name. Praise your name. Jesus, lift up his holy name, lift up the name of Jesus, come let us sing his praise, come let us glorify the Lord most high, we love to praise your name, name, name. Lord, we love Online broadcast of the Calvary Temple Community Church. We now join Reverend Andre Simmons live. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. God bless you and a very precious good morning 
to each and every last one of you joining us here from our Calvary Temple Community Church online church. That's what it is. And we are thankful today that we could come on into your heart, into your home, wherever you are tracking us, wherever you are following us. Uh, we want to say to you, God bless you. Thank you so much for logging on and being part and parcel of our CTCC, our online church service. And of course, we are located right here in Grove, Six Road, St. Philip, in the beautiful island of Barbados. It's great to have you on board. Uh, there are a couple things that I want to touch on quickly. Of course, we've got a very special surprise for you today. Uh, just before we go into our worship set, and our sister Faye takes us to the throne of grace. Uh, right after that, there's going to be a, <laughs> a little surprise. I'm happy today. Today is a good day to be alive in the land of the living. And uh, I've asked one of our ministers, uh, Minister Garfield Johnson, to be with us and to bring the rich word of the Lord. Uh, this is a young man who is coming along beautifully and uh, has already got his uh, degree, his bachelor's degree in theology, and I'm looking forward to be able to call him pastor. Amen. So there it is. The whole world knows, and uh, we're happy from Calvary to be able to open the door and to make opportunity for a fresh face as we go into the word of the Lord in a few moments. Let me take the opportunity to uh, welcome all of you also on behalf of our fellowship, our membership here at Calvary Temple, and uh, inclusive, of course, of our coach, uh, Reverend Dr. George Callender, and the entire cadre of board members and our pastors as well. It's great to have you all locked on. Whether you're on Facebook or you're there on YouTube, we say to you, God bless you. I want to take an opportunity also uh, to shout out our entire worship team and band, our tech team. I want to bless you all. I must tell you that it's quite flattering for Consuelo and I to have you all come on board and to strengthen the cords, strengthen the knees, as the Word of God tells us, and to strengthen the hands that sometimes hang down. But we're thankful today that we could connect with you and that you all would connect with us. So all of you in our worship team and band, our Calvary Temple Community Church, worship team, band, and tech department, I say to you, God bless you, and we bequeath blessings upon you. If I was a little bit younger, I would say, woot, 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 woot. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, while I'm at it, uh, let me also acknowledge on behalf of our assembly, greetings and appreciation uh, to... Uh, Miss uh, Linda Tappin, who now resides in Ajax, East Ontario. So we're going all the way over to Canada. Uh, Linda has visited us here at Calvary uh, Temple frequently from time to time whenever she is here in the island. Greetings also from her friend Holly Tudor in Brampton on the other side of Ontario. Uh, thanks for following us and sharing with friends and family your encouragement and support. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, and then a, a third lady, yet a third lady who looks forward to our online services every single Sunday and who has also visited us here at Calvary on a couple of occasions when she's in the island. Her name is Shirley Morris. Uh, so blessings to you. We shout you out, Shirley. Shirley Morris living in Chesapeake. I hope I got that pronunciation correctly. Chesapeake. Virginia, United States of America. And then there's this young man who is all the way over in Dubai. I hope you all are listening to this. this I'm not just uh, chatting for chatting's sake. Of course, the numbers are coming up as I speak to you, and we're giving people a chance to come on stream uh, and, and join us as families get together. Uh, they're on the Facebook page and YouTube channel. But here's a young man from Dubai, and this guy, together with his friends and so forth, they connect with us, James Carmichael, shouting you out. Uh, Dubai, for those of you who may not be aware, part of the United Arab Emirates. So all over the world, whether you are there in the United States of America, in Florida, we've got lots of family and friends in Miami, Florida, together with New York City, New Jersey, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, and right across United Kingdom uh, as well. London, we say to you this morning, God bless you. And it is exciting to be alive and to be able to give God praise. I want to hurry up and get out of the way, make room for our sister, Faye Merle, 
who will take us to the throne of grace with uh, some passionate worship this morning. Uh, those of you who enjoyed Mother's Day service, come on, just open up your windows, open up your doors, let the neighbors know that you are glad to be part and parcel of what God's doing here at CTCC Online Church. Come on, give God praise. God bless you. Good day, everyone. It is indeed a pleasure to be with you again and celebrating the name of the Most High God. I hope that you had a good week. Regardless of what life has thrown at you, we know that with God in the midst that we can survive and we can thrive and we can make it. We've made it this far. And God is able to keep us. God is able to keep us. He's not left us alone. I give God thanks and I give him praise this morning. I'm excited to be here with you again. We're going to lift up the name of the most high God in praise and in worship. This song says, Lord, you are are good let's sing it as loudly as possible it doesn't matter if you are in tune or not you're in the privacy of your own home or wherever you are driving along the road in your car make some noise the Lord said make, make a joyful noise it doesn't have to be a key all right you have my permission to get up to dance and to shout and to just praise your God because nobody knows what God does for you like you know how he does for you amen Amen. Come on, let me see you clapping your hands out there. All of you in the chat, let me see you press that like button right now. Press that share button. Let's get some more people on on this feed this morning. Let's celebrate the name of the Most High. Lord, you are good, yes. Lord, you are good, yes. You are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, people from every nation in town, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. bless your name you are so good hallelujah let's make some noise for the king of kings and the lord of lords lord you are good sing lord you are good yeah Generation to win what now worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Yes, God, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yes. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Tell it. You are good all the time and all the time. You are good, yes, you are good all the time and all the time. You are good, you are good. You are good. Sing it again. You are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. Come on, make some noise for God. Hallelujah. The highest praise we can offer up to our God. Wherever 
you are this morning. Come on, sing it loud. Lord, you are good, yes. My Lord, you are good. Oh, I bless your name. Lord, you are good, yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. People from every nation. From generation to win what's now. Come on, let me see you jumping for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you for who you are. Yes, we worship you. you. This song says, there's nobody greater. There's nobody greater than you. And as we go through the words of the song, the songwriter is saying to you, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. It means that he was actively seeking. He was looking, he was searching, he was hunting for that person, that thing to fill that void within his life. But he didn't find anybody. This morning, that person may be you. You may be out of your job. You may have been studying and due to COVID-19 and and the restrictions in place, you don't know what's going to happen with your degree, with your course of study, how your life is going to pan out. This morning, have confidence and assurance that the answers are found in God and there's nobody greater for you. You don't have to search anymore. Be encouraged. God is here with you. Wherever you are. Come on, just for a moment. Just raise your hands in the air. And let's praise the name of the Most High God. Nobody, 
nobody greater nobody greater no nobody greater than you I searched all over couldn't find nobody I looked high and low still couldn't find nobody nobody greater nobody greater God nobody greater than you nobody can heal me like you can oh most holy one you are the great I am awesome in all your ways and my is your hand you are he who carried out redemption's plan you are he who carried out redemption's plan I searched all over come on couldn't find nobody I looked high and low what happened still couldn't find nobody why there's nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Oh my God, nobody. Come on, tell it. I looked high and low, still couldn't find anybody. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Come on, let's praise the name of the Lord. There is none like Him. If you believe that this evening, this morning, wherever you are listening to this recording, there is none greater than our God. He is the most high God. Come on, let's worship him. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, we testify this morning of your goodness, of your greatness. We can search all over and find nobody like him. There's nobody greater than you. You have been my healer, Jehovah Rapha. When the doctor says, because of the stroke I had, Father God, that they don't know if I'll be able to talk. As good as you hear me now, it wasn't like this before, but God was able to come through for me. God can come through for you. If you believe that, wherever you are listening this morning, come on, let's praise the name of the Most High God. There is nobody greater than he is. Hallelujah. 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 This song is just for you. A song of encouragement. You may not know how, you may not know when, but God is going to do it for you again. Whatever the it is, believe that this morning. 
God is there for you. Hallelujah. Oh! 
Pastor Andre for your kind introduction. And I would like to thank my sister Faye for that powerful rendition and for bringing the Holy Spirit into this place. If I didn't know any better, I would have said even if the Holy Spirit was far away somewhere in the north or in the Icelands, her rendition would have brought him here in a jiffy. But we know that they say wherever two and three are gathered, he is in the midst. This morning, I would like to thank my Heavenly Father for using me to bring a message to you out there. I pray, oh God, that you fill me with your word. Just as you filled me when I was preparing these teachings to bring to the people. I pray that this word inspire, touches, enlighten, and draw many with an interest to knock at Christ's door. Because your word says, knock and you shall be able to enter. Father, let me reduce so that you can be magnified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I would like to read to you from two portions of scripture. First, I'm reading from Romans 3, 21 to 25. And it reads, But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. The second portion of scripture I'm reading from is Leviticus 17, 11. And it says, For the life of the creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. This morning I would like to teach. As you have noticed that at Calvary Temple you have rich teaching. So my teaching this morning is on the blood. The blood that has been supplied. But it is, is it being applied? Why should we care about the supplied blood of Jesus Christ? What is so important? The word blood, as we know it, it is the red fluid circulating in our bodies. It takes nourishment to the body parts and carry away the waste. This word is used three, in three different ways in the Bible. It is used literally as it refers to the blood of animals and humans. It is used figuratively to emphasize a color as in saying the blood red moon. It also denotes murder, and it denotes humanity, as when we say in the flesh and blood. And the third way that it is used is spiritually, to denote life and death. It is in this spiritual reference of the blood in the scriptures that is of great importance to us. The reference scripture tells us that God has set forth Jesus Christ as an appropriation by his blood. And the answer to the importance can be found in the understanding and the meaning of the word propitiation. Propitiation comes from an old English word 
propitiate, which means to appease, to establish grounds for reconciliation. The Greek word used for propitiation in the New Testament is elasmos. It is related to a second Greek word, ilios, meaning merciful. And it, is, it describes Jesus through his sacrificial death, providing a covering for sin. Propitiation or hilasmus in the New Testament find its meaning illustrated in the Old Testament mercy seat. Illustorian, that's the Greek word for the mercy seat. The mercy street or illustorian covers the ark of the covenant, which contains the law. Therefore, through the mercy seat, God says, I know you have broken the law. I know that you deserve to be consumed because of it. But I am going to put a lid on it through the sacrifice of the atoning blood of Christ Jesus. But in the Old Testament, Jesus was not there as yet. So that atoning blood came from animals. In the New Testament, Christ Jesus is the inasmos, the mercy seat, the propitiation. Just as the blood of animals was poured on the mercy seat, covering the sins of people, Jesus' blood and death has covered and redeemed us. And it is not something that he gives. It is who he is. For he has come between us and the broken law. The wrath that God should have vented on us was in set place on his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus who died in our place. In 1 John 2.2, 2, it says that he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for all of the world. So we see it is not just for me or just for my pastor or for my worship leader. It is for all. So then propitiation can be defined as an atoning death of Jesus on the cross through which he paid the penalty that justice required because of man's sin. Thus, setting mankind free from sin and death through which God can mercifully, can be merciful to the sinner who believes in him and reconciliation is affected or effected. This other most important word, reconciliation, needs to be highlighted so we understand the importance of the blood of Jesus Christ. Reconciliation is important because mankind was separated from God because of sin. In Genesis 1, 26 to 28, we learn that God created man in his own image and likeness and gave him dominion over everything on the earth and in the air. In fact, he instructed them to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moveth on the earth. We learn the names of these two created human kinds to be Adam and Eve in Genesis 2, 19 and 3, 20 respectively. In giving dominion to man, God had in effect handed Adam the title deed to earth. It was in this that he was supposed to fill the earth and subdue it. Have control over it. Rule the earth. However, the adversary, Satan, was not about to stand by and let another territory be ruled by someone other than him. You see, he had lost the battle earlier. When he carried out a failed coup, trying to wrestle control of heaven from God. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 tells us the story of how Satan wanted to place his throne 
high above the throne of God. However, he was defeated and cast out of heaven to earth. So here again, in another territory, with dominion given to Adam, this did not sit well with Satan. Because Satan knew that man's dominion over earth was directly connected to his relationship with God. As long as man stay in communion with God, he had full access to the omnipotence, his dunamis, which is his power to exert control over the earth. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Without God's power or dunamis, Satan can overcome man. And knowing that God is holy and cannot be in the presence of sin, Satan decided that man, or decided to deceive man, so that he can sin against God, thus being separated from him and powerless to enforce dominion over the earth. But this one sinful act, though not losing the title deed of earth, man lost control of it. No longer was man able to enforce control because Satan was more powerful than man without God's dunamis, his power in our lives. Hence, Satan took control over the earth, dominating it. This is why Jesus called Satan the prince of this world, John 1231. Hence, the reason for wars, famine, sexual immorality, murder, death, disease, and all of these sinful behavior. These being no fault of God, but a direct consequence of man's rebellion. Now, the sin of, uh, that Adam committed, God had warned him against that if committed, the result would be death. Genesis 2.17. Romans 6.23 also tells us that the wages of sin is death. And in Romans 5.12, we learn that Adam's sin and consequence was not his alone. It had been passed down to all of mankind. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. So now, every generation of people born is sinful as it has been imputed to all. Psalms 51.5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother did conceive me. Since man was unable to overcome sin in their own strength, in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, God provided a way through atonement to cover over the sins, thus bringing them into his presence. This was made perfect under the New Covenant when Jesus Christ set forth an, as a appropriation by his blood. When Adam and Eve committed the first sin, they hid from God because they were ashamed, Genesis 3 and 8. Rather than giving them up as hopeless, God initiated a plan of atonement whereby the ruptured fellowship between him and humanity could be restored. The first indirect reference of atonement occurred when God provided animal skin to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness as an act of necessitating the death of a sinless animal and hence the shedding of blood on their behalf. Genesis 3 and 21. This introduces the theme that runs throughout the Bible where atonement involves an innocent party taking the punishment that was due to a guilty party. The death or blood of an innocent party was accepted by God as the substitute for the death 
which sinners deserve. You see, there was no atonement without blood. For the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement to yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one life. Leviticus 17, 11. Atonement under the old covenant with the blood of animals was just a shadow of the real thing, the image to come. Hebrews 10, 1. As the blood of animal sacrifices only temporarily cover over sin and had to be repeated yearly as it was insufficient to take away sins of man. Hebrews 10, 4. But in the new covenant, Jesus Christ, the perfect lamb who offered his life on Calvary's cross, shedding his blood in a once and for all sacrifice that permanently takes away the sin forever. Hebrews 10, 11 and 14. You see, there is power in the blood that Jesus Christ supplied. When applied, the blood provides redemption to man. Throughout the Bible, we see leprosy serves as an illustration of sin as it manifests itself insignificantly at first, just a little spot under the skin, but craftily went on to spread that the afflicted one would be cast out of the community. According to Leviticus 14, anyone healed of leprosy was to appear before a priest outside of the camp. If the priest found the healing to be true indeed, the former leper was, to in, was instructed to bring two birds, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. One of the birds was then killed in an earthen vessel over running water. The other bird, along with the cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop, was dipped in the blood of the slain bird. And the blood was then sprinkled seven times on the healed leper. And then the blood-soaked bird was released to fly over the field. This is an absolute perfect picture of redemption. Like the leper, we come to our great high priest, Jesus Christ, and we followed him outside the camp a picture of sinful man following Jesus Christ to Calvary's cross. Again, like the leper, the sacrifice of our, that our Savior made on behalf, on our behalf, consists of cedar wood of the cross, the offering of his own blood, the scarlet of his blood, and the hyssop of which he was offered to drink. John 19, 29. The cedar wood and the hyssop comes from a lofty tree and a lowly plant. It's a picture of the judgment of God on all men and on all the world. As it comes from the highest to the lowest things. Scarlet, scarlet is associated with the sins in Isaiah 1.18. So the thought here may be of God's judgment on sin. The blood sprinkled seven times speaks as much of completion as it does of the seven places which Christ bled. From his forehead in the garden of Gethsemane. From his back due to the flagellum that he was flogged with on his back. From his brow as the crown of thorns was forced upon his head. From his face as his beard was plucked out. From his hands as they were nailed to the cross. From his feet, as they were nailed to the cross. And from his side, due to the soldier's spear. In many ways, leprosy is a type of sin that renders man unclean and exclude him from the clamp of God, separated from him and his people. This is why there is need to be an application of blood and seven times the blood of Jesus Christ flowed, providing complete forgiveness of sins for men, completely healing our leprosy. 
the running water is significant of the Holy Spirit regenerative work in the cleansing of the leper, just as with Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When his side was pierced by the soldier's spear, blood and water came out, signifying regenerative work of the Holy Spirit, cleansing our sins, John 19 and 34. When a sinner by faith turned to the Lord in repentance, the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus, pictured by the two birds, one killed and one set free, is reckoned to our account. The atoning blood is applied through the power of the Spirit. And in God's sight, we are clean, gaining complete victory over the enemy. You see, the blood has been supplied. Is it being applied? Oh, yes. There is power in the supplied blood of Jesus Christ as it brings justification to man. Justification being the process by which sinful human beings are made accountable to a holy God by grace alone, through faith alone. Romans 3.24 it is God declaring that the demands of his holy law have been fulfilled in the righteousness of his son. The basis for justification is the death of Christ, his shed blood. 2 Corinthians, 9, 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespass to them, not imputing the trespasses to them. This reconciliation of sin, for by one offering, he has perfected those who are sacrificed, who are sanctified, sorry, Hebrews 10 and 14. Justification then is based on the work of Christ, accomplished through his blood, Romans 5, 9, and brought to his people through his resurrection. When God justifies, he charges the sin of man to Christ and, credited, and credits Christ's righteousness to the believers. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men resulting in justification to life, Romans 5.18. Although the Lord Jesus paid the price for justification, it is through our faith that he, that he received his righteousness and his experience is enjoyed, Romans 3.25-30. Faith is considered righteousness, Romans 4, 3, 9, and not the works of man, Romans 4, 5, but as the gift and work of God, John 6, 28 to 29. Thus, the order of events in justification is grace, faith, and works. Or, in other words, by grace, through faith, resulting in works. Ephesians 3, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. The supplied blood of Jesus brings healing. In Numbers 21, 5 to 9, the Israelites in the wilderness, led by Moses, were suffering from the plague of the fiery serpent, which was a self-inflicted punishment resulting from their frequent murmuring. God's judgment was in allowing what their presumption invited, and many died from the bites of the serpent. But in answer to the repentance of the people, God prescribed the erecting of a bronze serpent to which any might in faith be healed. Jesus referred to this in John 3, 14 and 15, where he clearly implies that the bronze serpent typifies his being raised up upon the cross. 
our healing, both spiritual and physical, comes from looking and identifying with Christ crucified, by whose stripes we are healed, 1 Peter 24 and 2.24. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 gives clear evidence for divine healing as being provided in the blood shed atonement of Christ's redeeming work on the cross. Christ was to suffer for our sins and sicknesses, as verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for his peace was upon us, and by his stripes we are healed. Before I left to come here to deliver this word, my wife read through the prepared word that I had, and she asked a question. Why is it that God would allow this, the, 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 the image of a bronze serpent to be able to heal his people? I was stumped. I had no answer. But it's a good thing that I don't serve myself, that I allow the Holy Spirit to work within me. And the Holy Spirit did give me an answer. The answer that he gave to me, it was that because we know that in the Bible, it says that it, the Bible, everything that is put into the Bible is there for our edification. And the bronze serpent that he allowed those people in, in, in those times, in the, in the old covenant, to be able to look upon and to be healed. He wanted man to know and man to have faith that if man can have faith in the bronze serpent and could be healed. How much more can you not be healed if you look upon our repentant, our blood-soaked, our Christ Jesus who had given his life for us on the cross and who is resurrected and is no longer dead but is alive? How much more will you not be healed? Oh, bless the Lord. There is protection in the provided blood of Jesus. After being held in bondage for 400 years, the children of Israel prayed to the Lord and he raised up a deliverer named Moses. He was instructed to give Pharaoh this message. Thus said the Lord, let my people go. But Pharaoh refused to release the Israelites. And God caused plagues to come upon the people of Egypt. Each time Moses asked Pharaoh to let the people go, and he refused, a plague was released on Pharaoh and his people. This occurred until the tenth plague, the plague of the firstborn, which was the death of every firstborn son in the nation of Egypt. Since God's people reside in Egypt, they needed protection from this plague. God instructed them that each household must kill a lamb without blemish and dip a brush like a hyssop plant in the blood and mark the doorpost and the lentil, which is the beam that run across. When the angel of death passes through the lands of Egypt to strike all the firstborn of both men and beasts, and he sees the blood, he will pass over these house and all the occupants inside will be protected. Exodus 11 and 12. Just as the blood of this sacrificial lamb in the Old Testament was applied to the doorposts of the houses to, for protection, so too we must apply the blood of the sacrificial lamb Christ Jesus on everything in our lives for protection, for protection against sickness, for protection against disease, for protection against Satan and his entourage, against accidents and against natural disasters and against wickedness of other people against us. There is the blood provided by Jesus, that all-powerful blood. It is a weapon. The passage in Revelation 12, 10 to 11 portrays Satan as cast down to earth, confronting and accusing God's people. The primary weapon of the people against Satan is the precious blood of the Lamb, Christ Jesus. His blood causes the people to prevail because 
It answers all of the enemy's accusations. Satan control and defeat humankind through guilt and accusations, as he is a blackmailer. However, believers know that the blood that has satisfied all of our charges against them, joining them to God and providing them with every necessary provision to defeat Satan. The blood has established an unassailable bond with the sovereign Lord and prevents Satan from separating the embattled believer from God's eternal complete resources, ensuring victory to the believers. This victory being achieved by the shed blood of Christ Jesus and the testimony to the value of that shed blood. And they overcame him, which is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12 and 11. In concluding, I say to you today, O oh Lord, I know I am a sinner, but because you observe the anger that should have been poured out on me. I leave here today with a warm, joyful heart, weakened knees, and a blown mind. May you continue to give us a comprehension of your love through the understanding of propitiation, which is the atoning blood supplied by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ your son died on the cross, shedding his blood as was, and was then resurrected as the only acceptable payment for our sins. The disciple Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your, from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere silver and gold. He paid for you with the precious lifeblood of Christ Jesus, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is absolutely the most precious thing you have offered us. And what is so amazing and mystifying about your propitiation is not just you saying you were going to settle mankind's problem judicially, you dealt with it personally, actually becoming the object of your own wrath. And just as the blood, and just as the blood we know circulating in our bodies to take nourishment to the body parts and carry away the waste, so too might the mighty blood of Jesus Christ brings abundantly to us the love and the forgiveness of Christ Jesus. And it carries away our sins. It takes away our diseases. It takes away our pains and our sorrow. And it takes away all of our problems. It is through this wonderful reconciling blood of Christ Jesus that you, God, have restored our dominion over the earth, which you have given us in the beginning, ensuring that the dominion of the typical deeds remain in the hand of the rightful owner. To all of you who is under my hearing and under my voice, I say to you today, the blood has been supplied. It is now time for it to be applied. I thank you, O oh God, for using me, a humble servant, for delivering this word. And I pray, oh God, it meet you wherever you are. I touch your life and you're inspired to knock at his door. You're inspired to come in. You're inspired, oh God, to want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I pray, oh God, that you continue to press your hands upon the people out there and invite them into your kingdom. I thank you. Bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. This morning, you heard a message from God. Not just from a minister of the gospel who had a degree. No, but someone who has been anointed by God. 
to teach the word of God. And that's important. The message is clear. An answer is required. A question was asked. Whenever a question is asked, there must be an appropriate answer. Friend, I'm getting ready to pray. And only you can give that answer. The truth is, the blood of Jesus Christ has been supplied. The big question, which only you, sir, ma'am, young person, hear me today. Only you can answer that question. It is this, has it been applied? Only you can apply that blood to your own life, to your own heart, to your own situation. Now listen, I'm getting ready to pray. This is important. I want you to stretch your hands toward that tablet, toward that device. If you're not already holding it, I want you to put one hand on that device. And the other hand, if it is free, put it over your heart by faith. In the name of Jesus, I'm believing God for you today. Because we're talking about the blood of Jesus. And this is one of the most important, one of the most sacred subject matters that you can find anywhere in the Word of God. And the blood has been supplied. I want you to say that with me right there in your living room, in your patio, in your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you are. The blood has been supplied. Say it again. The blood has been supplied. The blood of Jesus supplied. The Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, friend. So this is important. Maybe it's a good time for you to rededicate your life, your heart to Christ. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart. This is a wonderful opportunity today from Calvary Temple Community Church for you to rededicate your life to God afresh and make it new. To apply, that's the key word now, the blood that has already been supplied by heaven. Let's pray right now. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Look into my eyes, the windows of the soul, and mean it with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a Savior. I apply that precious blood to my heart. The Bible tells me that you bled and you died. On the third day, after you were buried, you got up from the grave. Today, you are alive. I declare this truth. You, Lord Jesus, live. And I ask you today to come and rule in my heart. Take the reins of my life. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my all. All of my mistakes. All of my sin. I had a lot, a lot of sin. But I give it to you today, Lord. I lay it down at your feet. At the foot of the cross. By faith. And I ask you to wash my sins away. Write my name in your book of life. I believe Lord Jesus. My name is in that book. According to the book of Revelation. According to your word. My name today is in your book of life. Together with all the names of those who have confessed you as Lord and Savior. And who have repented of their sins. So I apply your blood to my heart. I thank you for the supply, but today I apply. I thank you for the supply, but today I apply. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Listen, friend, listen, look at me. You prayed that prayer just now, and you meant it with everything. I want you to know today you are a child of God. It doesn't matter who tells you what. It doesn't even matter how you feel. You know you can't go by feelings. Feelings have no sense. I've discovered that. If, if I went by feelings, I probably wouldn't even be here right now ministering this gospel or praying this prayer for you. Feelings are so whimsical. Here today and gone tomorrow. You can't rely on feelings. Some of you would not even have logged on if you went by feelings. You would have stayed in bed. You just woke up, you would have woken up, and you would have rolled over on the other side and gone back to sleep. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying is true. You can't go by feelings. I'm coming to you today with the word. We brought the word from Calvary Temple today to help you to understand that the only way that you will see eternity, that you will stand before God and hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy salvation, is by standing on the promises of God's word. Nothing to do with feelings. If Jesus went by feelings, he would not even have gone to the cross. 
That's why he prayed the prayer he prayed in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. It had nothing to do with feelings. He said, not my will, Lord. Lord of mercy. Thine will be done. And he went all the way to the cross for you. And he did it for me. And I bless his wonderful name today from Calvary Temple Community Church. Thank God that today you are born again believer. That's great news. I want you to share that good news with somebody else. Tell your friends. Tell someone in your contacts listing. Let your neighbors know you are saved and you mean it. And you mean it. And I want you to follow through with that. You need to get connected with a good, healthy assembly that preaches and teaches the Word of God, that practices the Word of God. Uh, Calvary is not the only one, but these days, you know full well, you got to look very, very carefully. And you need to be careful with the decisions that you're making when you connect to an assembly. And then get involved. The worst thing you can do is just to make a decision Go to an assembly when the doors are reopened again. And thank God you can go in there and frequent and enjoy the fellowship and the company of other believers. And then do nothing towards service towards God. Get involved in what that assembly is doing. Find out from the pastor or those appointed leaders how you can be a blessing to your Savior. And give back to God just as God has given to you today. Amen. And I want to thank Minister Garfield. Johnson for a powerful message today where he taught the Word of God. And if more pastors would teach and more preachers would teach, I believe that the church would be strengthened and that much more edified. Amen.
I want to take the opportunity once again to thank all of you for being with us uh, as we connect the way we do online. Uh, those of you who have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please take a moment out and do that. Together with those who are on Facebook, if you have not followed us. And I, and I suspect a lot of you are on Facebook and you're tracking. I mean, we had, uh, it's about an average of 10,000 people that we're reaching every single week from Sunday to Sunday. What an amazing thing. No, no credit to Calvary, no credit to a man or a team even, but credit to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to make that abundantly clear. <laughs> All the glory to God. And this is what he's chosen to do through us, for us, with us, and for you in two months of being online from CTCC here in Barbados. Uh, that is a wonderful thing. So I want to say to you, if you have not yet followed, follow. Don't just come on and watch the services and view the services. We bless God for those thousands. But go on there and follow the page. That is important. So that when we drop little nuggets of truth into your, uh, into your heart and we want to get the message over to you during the course of the week, you can also pick up on them. It's not only Sunday mornings. There are a lot of little snippets that we, we use to feed God's people on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as well. Amen. So from all of us to all of you, God bless you. Uh, let me also encourage you, or first of all, thank you for those of you who have been making your monetary donations. That is a tremendous blessing. Uh, no amount is too small. No amount is too big. I want to say to you, thank you very much on behalf of the cadre of board of directors, together with the pastors here at Calvary and all of us as an entire fellowship. We want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for every single donation that you make available to help us to propel and propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves sinners like you and I. And uh, if you're interested in doing that, more power to you. Please make a note of our savings account number, 72100312. That's our CIBC branches, CIBC branches, savings account number, 72100312. Looking forward to reconnecting with you again next Sunday, 10 a.m. And I've got another surprise for you. You are not going to want to miss this for anything. Remember now, take this truth with you throughout the course of the week. The blood has been supplied. Make sure that you tell someone that it has got to be applied. From Calvary Temple Community Church, Grove Six Road, St. Philip Barbados, saying God bless you. <laughs>